Hi, everyone. We still have about a minute before the webinar starts, so we're just going to hang tight for probably a minute after two, um, since there are still people uh, joining. Thank you, Don. No problem, Dee Dee. We're just gonna wait one more minute. Um, I see people are still joining. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting, if you could locate the um, questions module on your GoToWebinar um, pop out, I guess it's called. I'm not, I, I don't know, to pop out. Um, let me know what color shirt you're wearing today so I can make sure that you can hear me. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I see there's actually lots of Valentine's uh, t-shirt colors out there. So way to be in the February Valentine's spirit, everyone. Um, so welcome to the Give Local Piedmont uh, webinar number one. This webinar is all about getting started on the platform. Um, or if you participated last year, it's all about refreshing yourself with the platform. Um, you know, how to make your page beautiful, uh, some of the tools that are associated with the account that you get um, with G Give Local Piedmont. So um, let me go ahead and get started. Okay, so again, welcome to the first Give Local Piedmont training webinar. Uh, my name is Dawn, and I'll be leading you through today's presentation. Um, I have a few housekeeping items to note before jumping in. Uh, first, the webinar will be recorded. Uh, it's going to be posted in the toolkit on the Give Local Piedmont site. It'll be under the resources tab. And then second, um, you can use that GoToWebinar uh, questions module that several of you typed in um, your t-shirt color uh, to send across any questions during the presentation. And we're gonna have a questions portion at the end. And so that's when we'll get to all the questions. So if you think of something during uh, the presentation, feel free to jot it down in that questions module, send it along, and I'll be happy to answer all the questions at the end. I also have Dee Dee. Um, on the webinar from Northern Piedmont Community Foundation. She has been working extra, extra hard to make sure that this year's uh, Giving Day is gonna be awesome for everyone. Um, so I just wanna welcome Dee Dee and uh, feel free to take it away. 
Thank you, Don. I'm not going to waste a lot of time here because the focus is uh, understanding the platform and learning how to make a beautiful page that's compelling to donors. Um, so uh, as much as I will say is that I hope everyone on the call <clears throat> uh, keeps abreast of us through both social media and through the emails that we send to you between now and May the 4th. Um, there's a lot of a lot of good data that we uh, impart between now and then, and a lot of it having to do with how to help you have the best day possible. Um, I encourage you all now, uh, those participating in the call now, um, and I see the attendees just keep going up and up. Um, mark your calendars also for March 17th. That's the final webinar from Mighty Cause and Northern Piedmont having to do with uh, fundraising. Um, it's specifically geared towards fundraising for a one day online event, but it, given if it's anything like last year's fundraising webinar, uh, there's a lot of gold uh, about fundraising in general and what we can do. We also do uh, try our best to focus on those of you who um, have limited access to uh, online. Uh, so in other words, some of your um, some of the work that you do to encourage people to donate uh, on this one day online giving day will be done through the mail instead of um, online. Uh, and that's it. Um, uh, if you need any help ever, uh, the quickest way to get my particulars is through npcf.org. Um, Jane Bowling Wilson, the executive director, me, our executive assistant, Vanessa Scherz, Storm, we stand ready to assist. And Dawn, I pass it on to you. Thanks, Dee Dee. Um, I just want to say first that uh, we, Mighty Cause, are just really excited to partner with um, Give Local Piedmont and the Northern Piedmont Community Foundation again for the event this year. Um, we also are really looking forward to providing technical support to everyone as you gear up for the big day. Um, so if you have any questions that are mighty cost specific, like your page, um, uh, how to utilize tools on your page, um, you know, if you're having trouble logging in, um, any questions at all, um, or, you know, if any of your donors have any questions, um, our support team is also here to help you. You can reach out to them um, at support at mightycause.com. I will have a support slide at the very end of the webinar where um, you can, uh, I'll leave that up for a good second so you can copy down any contact information. Um, and then I'll also make sure that we have all of the information on the site. I'm pretty sure that we already do, but I'll just double check too. Um, and just for a little background on Mighty Cause, uh, Mighty Cause is a fully functioning nonprofit fundraising suite that um, many, many organizations use 365 days a year to raise money for their causes. Uh, we've been around since uh, 2006, and we're actually one of the first platforms to host Giving Days. So we've been doing this kind of event for a really long time, um, and we are super excited to uh, help out with Give Local Piedmont um, again this year. So we are also hoping for the best year ever um, for everyone that's participating. Okay. So here's a look at today's agenda. Um, we're gonna be going over some of the basics. Uh, then we're gonna be walking through registering and navigating your nonprofit page on the platform. That's where you'll get all of the information about how to make your page look really great to donors um, and how to customize your checkout flow and just basically all the things that you'll wanna touch on to make sure that your donors have the best experience when they come to the platform as well. Um, and then after that, we're going to be reviewing the Give Local Piedmont um, offline donation policy. Uh, and then lastly, we'll do a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So again, if you have any questions while I'm presenting, just type it into that questions box um, on that GoToWebinar panel, uh, and we'll make time for it at the end. Okay, so first things first, uh, Give Local Piedmont basics. So Give Local Piedmont um, is going to be on May 4th this year. Um, I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of uh, fun memes. I, I hope to see lots and lots of fun memes going around about, you know, may the fourth be with you. Uh, so please don't hold back um, for everyone that's participating. Uh, it's going to be a 24 hour giving day that runs from midnight to midnight. Early giving this year is going to start on April 20th 
Um, and again, it's organized by the Northern Piedmont Community Foundation. Um, the really awesome thing about this giving event is that there's lots and lots of prize money at stake and there's going to be lots of opportunities to win and they really put a lot of time and effort into getting these prizes for you all um so you know you can view the prizes currently available in the toolkit on the give local piedmont website um, but we'll be reviewing them in full uh during that um that final webinar that dd mentioned on march 17th um so how does a giving day work um, for those of you who are new a giving day is a unique campaign um, presented by a host organization um, in this case northern piedmont community foundation um, that allows organizations to compete with other nonprofits, um, or you can always compete against your own goal to win prize money so giving days are really an exciting way for you to engage sponsors community partners peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers um, and more to spread the word about your organization and your mission and just basically raise funds for your cause. So the limited time frame that is created by a giving day really creates a sense of urgency that donors tend to respond to. And of course, you know, the prizes available um, are a big plus and they give you fresh messaging opportunities, which is always um, a really great thing when you're, you know, a nonprofit. So what does my nonprofit need to do? So to participate in Give Local Piedmont, um, you'll want to register your organization if you haven't already done so. Um, once you've registered, you can customize your profile on Mighty Cause and start planning for your campaign. Um, you can invite people involved with your organization to participate as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. And then once early giving has started on April 20th, you can really start promoting your campaign. And then of course, you'll want to do most of your heavy pushes for donation asks on the actual giving day, May 4th. Um, so basically, you'll need to raise money to win some of the awesome prizes that they have available. So this is the homepage uh, for Give Local Piedmont this year. You'll see the URL there at the top. Um, I would definitely bookmark um, the URL so that you have it handy. You always know where it's located. Um, once the giving day starts, this is where you'll see the leaderboards um, that will indicate what place you're in, uh, as well as any additional prizes that are going on. Um, so again, make sure you bookmark it now so that you have it when you need it. Um, this page, this homepage has all the tools that you'll need too, um, the resources that come with Give Local Piedmont. You'll see the register button um, is right there at the top. Uh, if you haven't registered yet, this is where you can go to do so. The Giving Day homepage uh, also has these tabs that you see here. Um, that include the rules and the resources like the FAQ and toolkit um, and other information. And then this is also where you can find the information about the prizes that are currently available. Okay, so getting started. So first things first, again, if you haven't already done so yet, you're going to want to register your organization for Give Local Piedmont. So registration is a two-step process. Um, step one is going to givelocalpiedmont.org and filling out that registration form. Um, you'll need to either log into your uh, existing Mighty Cause account or sign up for an account on Mighty Cause to view the form. Um, once you complete the registration form online, you'll receive an email confirming that we've received it. Um, and then that email will also detail step two uh, to complete registration. Um, you'll also be able to add administrators to your organization's account, so multiple people will be able to access and help run your campaign. Uh, and then step two uh, of registration is filling out your organization's to-do list under the overview section on your nonprofit dashboard. So once you've complete, um, completed both steps, then your registration um, will be approved, um, and you'll receive an email confirming that you're approved and you're all set. So with that said, one very important thing to know um, that I want everyone to, to pay attention to is that if you participated in Give Local Piedmont last year, your to-do list is already complete. So you have essentially, you're ahead of the game. Step two is done for you. All you have to do is step one, fill out the registration form, and then you'll be all set. Um, so, but if you have any questions about that, let us know. You can email support at mightycause.com. You can ask Dee Dee. Um, but basically, if you participated in the past, in 2020 specifically, all you have to do is step one, and then um, our team is going to review, and you'll be all set. 
Um, so again, any questions, support at mightycause.com. Or you can put your question in the questions module and I will be happy to answer it at the end. Okay, navigating your dashboard. So uh, once you filled out and submitted your registration form for step one of the registration process, um, again, you'll wanna complete your to-do list if you haven't already done so. Um, so this list is located in the overview section um, on your nonprofit profile, um, right by your metrics. Um, Again, if you've already completed your to-do list from last year, that little uh, tab with the to-do list is not going to show up for you. So feel free to like sing a little song while I go over this to-do list stuff if you've already completed it. Um, there's four basic items for Give Local Piedmont that um, new organizations are going to need to complete. You're going to need to add a background image to your page or use one from our gallery of stock background images. Uh, you're going to want to upload your logo, which will represent you um, throughout Give Local Piedmont. You'll want to add a story that tells visitors uh, to your profile about what your nonprofit organization does. You're going to want to build a thank you page that donors see once their donation transaction is completed. Um, for those new orgs, if you click the link in your to-do list, uh, you'll be taken right to the spot on your profile where you can complete that task. So it's super easy for you to complete the list. Um, if you do need help or you're unsure how to complete any of those items, then let us know. Again, at support at mightycause.com. Um, or you can check out our support library. We have lots of walkthroughs and videos that can help you out as well. So for hey, those of you, yeah. Can you say one more time for new applicants where the to-do list lives? Yeah. So um, if you, in this little GIF, you'll see the overview. Um, on the left hand side dashboard it's the first one at the top overview so if you click on that the to-do list is going to be um, located the link to it is going to be located right underneath uh, the title overview on that page and so you just click it and it opens up this to-do list that you see on the screen uh, on this slide um, so uh, everyone now can listen to this next part um, I Highly recommend taking some time to get to know your dashboard. Um, and you know, if you participated last year but haven't been to the site since, I I really encourage you to re review it again, or refresh yourself with it. Your dashboard is the admin section that appears on the left hand side of the screen when you're logged in and you're on your nonprofit's profile. So um, when you log in, you'll automatically land in that overview section. Um, for new orgs, this is where you'll find your to-do list. For all orgs, this is where you'll find metrics for your nonprofit. Um, we have some really cool like new features in this overview section. Um, you know, it, it will give you year-over-year -year information. It gives you some other cool stats. So um, definitely check it out. Um, this is where uh, you'll also find any like announcements for Give Local Piedmont. We don't have any currently, but if you know Northern Piedmont Community Foundation wants to um, include something, those will be in your uh, overview section um, of your account. Uh, so um, next, under the fundraising section um, on your dashboard, uh, you can customize your organization page uh, by toggling on edit mode um, and you know including page metrics like adding a goal for the giving day um, to enable a progress bar on your page. Within that fundraising section on your dashboard, you'll also find checkout flow. Um, all of these things I'll be covering in the following slides more in detail, but I'm just giving a quick overview. Um, uh, matching grants is also under fundraising. And then um, below that on the dashboard is the report section, which is where you're, you'll be able to preview and export different types of reports. Um, and then you can manage your nonprofit settings like URL customization and admin control from your settings section. So customizing your profile. Um, so jumping into your overall profile for Give Local Piedmont, um, your profile is the face of your nonprofit for the giving day. So you'll just wanna make sure it looks really good um, and represents you well. Um, just so you know, your profile link is the link that you'll share with your supporters to ask them to donate um, to your Give Local Piedmont page. So to share your page, just copy and paste that URL into an email or social post or wherever you're advertising the campaign. Um, so, you know, if, it, as you're going through your to-do list, you'll want to um, customize your profile to match your brand. 
Um, or if you participated last year, you can go to your profile, review it, make sure all the information is up to date and correct. Um, on your profile, you can change your theme color to match your logo. Uh, you can upload media to your gallery to add more of like visual interest to your page. Um, your story and uh, the description of your mission is really going to be the centerpiece of your page. Um, so in your story, you can put your mission statement, you can add photos and videos. Um, just as a note, you'll need to upload the video to YouTube or Vimeo first, uh, but you can embed a video in your story so that people can watch it right there on your page. Um, this story section, the spot's really where you can go in depth about your work. Um, you know, make make a really strong appeal to donors, tell them why your organization needs their support during Give Local Piedmont, and just really be able to showcase the impact of your work. Um, so spend time customizing this profile because the more you work, the more work you put into it, um, chances are that the better, you know, hopefully the better you'll do during Give Local Piedmont. Donors will obviously see that you've put time and effort into it. Um, which will just uh, look good to them as well. So jumping into some specific editing pieces of your profile, um, we're gonna talk about editing your theme first. Um, the first thing you'll wanna do when editing your profile is upload your organization's logo. Um, you can use that pencil icon um, that you see on the Animal Humane Society logo right there to open that section up for editing. Logos need to have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio in order to fit in that section. Um, the logos on Mighty Carls are the same aspect ratio as many social media sites. So if you use your logo as part of your Facebook or Twitter profiles, then you can use the same logo here um, as well. Um, you'll basically, you'll also want to make sure that your logo doesn't clash with your background image. <clears throat> and then next thing you want to do is upload your background image. Um, you can see the background image on the example here is of two people sitting on a couch. Uh, your background image will look best if it's mostly text free um, and a strong image that's representative representative of your nonprofit. Um, landscape oriented images work best. Uh, if you're if you don't have any like if you're if you don't have any good pictures or high quality photos that you want to use or feel comfortable using, we do offer a gallery of images to choose from that are high quality. Um, they're more generic, but they're, it's, it's a pretty wide array. So I'm sure you, you know, anyone could find something there that will fit. Uh, and then of course your logo will still be there too. So it'll still be representative of your brand. Um, so don't, <laughs> don't feel like, you know, don't get too stressed out about choosing like the perfect background image. Um, Cause we this do is... have those options as well. And this is also a good example of when to cry uncle and reach out for support at mightycost.com. If for some reason the logo you're uploading uh, just doesn't land well on the page, it doesn't look like you want it to, it doesn't look like you think it should, when you look at the phrase one-to-one -one aspect ratio and you're saying to yourself, what in the world does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, this is this is where uh, support at mightycause.com comes in um, to uh, do exactly that, to support you and help you. Um, no one should suffer for more. I think Dawn's criteria is work on it for five or ten minutes, and if you can't get it, then email us and we'll help you. <laughs> Yeah, basically. I mean, your your length of time is longer. I usually say if it takes you longer than 30 seconds to figure it out, then <laughs> please, please email us. We are we are here to help. Um, so then the next thing um, is uh, updating the theme color for your organization profile page. That's specifically what this um, GIF on the slide is. Um, the theme color allows you to pick a consistent color that shows throughout the experience your organization provides um, your supporters. Um, it's really easy to set. Uh, just click that palette icon. Um, that's the background that you see here. The palette icon is right there. Um, and then it'll open up that section for editing. You can pick a color from the color box that's provided, or you can use a hex code um, to get the exact color you want for your theme. Um, if you don't know what color you want or aren't sure what a hex code is, email us, support at mightycost.com. We can grab your hex code for you from anything. Um, there's some, I, I personally use just a Google like Chrome plugin to grab hex codes. Uh, but you know, that way it grabs the exact color, but you know, 
it can also be a, uh, you know, you can eyeball it too. Um, that'll be fine. Uh, but again, email us if you have any questions or you're not sure, um, or it takes you longer than 30 seconds to figure it out. Okay, so um, the next thing that you'll want to focus on, this is specifically uh, for organizations that have participated in Give Local Piedmont in the past. Um, you specifically will want to um, think about resetting your metrics for this year. Um, that way your organization profile accurately reflects just 2021 money raised for Give Local Piedmont. Um, to do that, you'll want to go to your organization profile um, within your fundraising section, what, you know, what we were just looking at. Click the pencil icon next to the section you want to edit. Um, you can see here the metrics calculation section and the goal section uh, with the progress bar both have pencil icons so you can customize. Um, essentially, when you go to your organization page, everything you see that has pencil icons, you can edit. So there's lots there's lots of choices. You can make your profile as fancy or as simple as you want, um, depending on what you have time for or you know what you want your donors to see. So with metrics specifically, uh, you do have a, um, several options when resetting those metrics for 2021. Um, you can showcase both the amount raised, you can showcase the number of donors that you, you know, you can see that in this slide, um, or you could just have one or the other. You can choose to calculate your donations over all time, um, or you can uh, choose to calculate them starting on a specific date. Um, I highly recommend early giving um, on April 20th. So basically what that means is if you go in now and you say start calculation on a specific date, put in April um, 20th at, um, you know, let's say midnight, which would be 0000, 000, 000 because it's um, uh, uh, the four, oh my goodness, four Mil uh, military time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, that means that any funds that you raise, like if you happen to run a campaign next month, um, because you're really awesome and have lots of campaigns going on all the time um any funds raised won't actually show on your organization profile until early giving starts because you've chosen to start your metrics calculation on that specific date um and just so everyone knows resetting your metrics only updates the front and public view um, on your profile it doesn't do anything to your back end it doesn't do anything to your reports um, your donation reports within your account will still contain all the donor information for campaigns that you've run during the year on Mighty Cause or um, give local Piedmont last year if you're just using the site for the giving day. Uh, and then while you're updating, you can also edit your goal um, or you can completely hide either section if you wanted your profile to be more evergreen. So it's pretty flexible. Um, so if you're only displaying uh, the information that you want to present to your donors. Okay, so um, the story section um, or the about section of your page is, is your chance to explain what your nonprofit is all about. So the text editor is right in that section. So all you have to do is just click into that section and start writing. Um, you can add media to your story, like I mentioned earlier, uh, to kind of jazz things up. You can utilize that inline text editor to add links, upload images, link out to videos from YouTube or Vimeo. They'll get embedded in your story so people visiting your profile can check them out right within that section. Uh, you can also add bulleted or numbered lists. Um, this spot, this about section is really where you can go in depth about your work um, and make that strong appeal to donors. Um, tell them why your organization needs their support. Show the impact of your support. If you're able to highlight um, specific, uh, you know, things that you've done or people that you've helped, then this, this would be the section where you can do that. Um, and you know, have it kind of tie into all of the email marketing that you're doing as well, or social media. So if you have a theme going um, in terms of the stories or animals or people that you're highlighting, this, this is a great place to be able to um, showcase that as well. Um, the other very cool piece of your profile is the ability to add custom tabs. Um, if you have any extra info that you wanna share that doesn't necessarily make sense to put in your story, you can create a custom tab to add that information um, to your nonprofit's profile. Um, well, you know, this still keeps everything organized and easy to find. Um, you can add anything that you want to the custom tab. It's totally custom. 
Um, so, you know, information about any upcoming events that you have, um, or, you know, frequently asked questions about your nonprofit, information about your staff, any acknowledgement, resources, links to more information. I could probably go on and on. Um, you can label the tab however you want, fill it in with whatever content you want to make your profile page just really comprehensive for your donors that are visiting. And of course, if you have any questions, let us know. So the media gallery on your organization's profile is where you'll be able to go to add any additional images that you have um, of your organization. It's a really great way to visually show donors what your organization does and where the funds are going. Um, along with the media, we have a stagnant media gallery, which basically means you can add pictures there and they never change unless you manually change them. Um, you can also connect your um, organization's Instagram um, and Facebook accounts um, to your profile, uh, which will import pictures that you already have there. So those are more, um, uh, those ones will update as you update your Facebook and Instagram, your, your organization profile uh, images with Instagram and Facebook will also update. So if you're tight on time, if you're a small nonprofit, connect um, your Facebook or Instagram, whichever one you use more. And that way you never have to worry about your pictures or images going out of date. They'll always be uh, current uh, with what you're doing as you update your social media channels. Um, so you can also optimize um, your social share settings uh, within the settings section on your Mighty Cause Manager. Um, we'll go into settings in a section, but basically, um, what that means is that you can standardize the social template whenever someone shares your campaign. So if somebody comes to your organization profile, um, wants to share your organization on their social media, you have the ability to provide them with like a template so that they don't have to, uh, you know, it's not going to be difficult for them to share. They can literally click share, your stuff comes up, your logo that you've put in that um, template, any information you've put in that template, and then all they have to do is share. Um, so you kind of have the ability to control the messaging there as well. Checkout flow. So um, moving away from your organization's profile, we're kind of going to start talking about um, items within the back end of your dashboard that you have the ability to customize. Um, the, the next like important thing that you'll definitely want to review um, and customize if you haven't already is your checkout flow. So the checkout flow is located um, within the fundraiser uh, section on the dashboard. Um, you can see on this graphic here, you have the fundraising section and then underneath that is your profile, which we just talked about. And then the checkout flow is the one that's highlighted. Um, so it's located underneath that um, fundraising section. The checkout flow is what your donors experience when they make a donation um, to your organization through Give Local Piedmont. So the first part is to customize your checkout steps. Um, this is probably one of the more important features to focus on when you're setting up your organization's um, you know, profile and flow for everyone. Um, the checkout flow section gives you a lot of control over the donation process for your organization um, on the site. It, it allows you to opt into collecting the information you want from donors. Um, like addresses and phone numbers. Um, you can also set up custom suggested donation amounts and you can add descriptions uh, to those suggestions to really help tie those amounts to um, items or services that your nonprofit provides, which basically just really strengthens your appeal um, to donate. And then the checkout steps within your checkout flow also allows you to preview the whole checkout process without um, actually making a test donation. So you can see what your final process will look like and use that to edit yourself if needed. Um, the next item within that checkout flow section is the post checkout section. Um, that part is where you'll go to set up your thank you page um, and customize your donation receipt, both of which use that same text editor um, that you saw in the story section on your profile. So, um, you can add text, links, a video or image um, to the thank you page specifically. Uh, you can also add a custom call to action button that tells donors where you'd like them to go next. Um, you know, a cool idea for that would be, for instance, you know, asking them to sign up for your email list and providing them a link to do so. 
Um, the, um, you can also customize your organization's donation receipt within the post checkout section. Um, this customization that you set um, appears above the tax deductible donation receipt that gets sent out automatically after a donor completes their donation on the site. So um, specifically for these two pieces within post checkout, the thank you page is what shows up after the donor completes the transaction on the website. Um, after they, the transaction goes through, they'll receive that donation confirmation page, which is that thank you page also. So you can customize that. You can, you know, let them know, um, thank you so much, uh, provide additional information about what their donation is going towards. Um, again, embed a video, um, all that good stuff. Just make it personal so that it's just another way that you can kind of steward them um, as a donor. And then, of course, the call to action button. And then within that post checkout um, uh, screen to edit, you can also um, scroll down to the bottom is where you can edit that um, donation receipt. So I highly recommend customizing both um, just so that you're able to control what your donors see and it's not just standardized messaging, um, but you know your logo is everywhere for them when they go through that, that whole flow from the time they check out the organization profile all the way through when their transaction is complete and they get that donation um, receipt in their email. So there's really a lot that you can do in the checkout flow um, to optimize your campaign and customize that checkout process for your donors. Um, again, please take the time to either set this up if you've never participated in Give Local Piedmont before, or if you're returning from last year, it's probably a good idea to just review what you have there currently to see if you need to make any updates. Um, the next thing within that fundraising section um, on your dashboard that I wanted to talk about is um, the matching grants tool. Um, so as I'm sure many of you know, having a matching grant from a donor or a corporate sponsor can go a really long way in driving donations. So I just want to make sure that you're aware that we have a tool um, specifically for matching grants. Um, and just to be clear, um, the matching grant um, you know, tool and functionality, this is something that your organization secures and sets up on your own. Um, this is separate. It, it, I mean, it's not like separate from Give Local Piedmont, but like the matching grant is something that you would um, uh, go through your own processes to secure it. Um, and then you would be the one benefiting from that matching grant specifically. So like, it's your matching grant. So this tool really helps you kind of market that um, to your supporters. Um, you know, if you wanted to do something like that for um, Give Local Piedmont. Um, it's a really versatile tool. Um, you, you've just, you've got a lot of options for how you can structure your match. Um, most matches are, you know, one-to-one. -one. Um, if, you know, if somebody gives that amount, um, the exact amount is matched. Um, but with the tool, you can do two-to-one matching, three-to-one, you can match a percentage to each donation. Um, our matching grant tool does all the math for you. So all you have to do is choose how you want to secure or structure your match. Um, and then you can also apply a match when a certain number of donations have been received. Um, so for instance, um, and we'll we'll talk about this more on our next webinar, um, just kind of strategy wise. But um, for example, you know, let's say there's a power hour available for the most individual donations. Um, you could say that if you get 100 donations, if your specific nonprofit gets 100 donations within the hour, then the match sponsor that you've secured will give an additional $1,000 for your nonprofit. Just an example. Um, really, however your matching grant is set up, the point is to actually you know, help you drive volume and traffic um, is to give you the tools to empower yourself to do that. So um, it just, it all, and it also allows you to post multiple grants at the same time, it also in sequence. So, you know, if, if you're able to secure a bunch of grants, you can have them fire one after the other. Um, there's lots of flexibility. Um, the, the tool is pretty user-friendly, but again, any questions, support at mightycause.com. Um, check it out, see if that's something that you're interested in, that you want to do, um, and, you know, we're always happy to help as well. Um, and then one last thing to note is that um, the match can be paid online through the platform. Um, I obviously recommend this route because then um, it'll count towards um, the Give Local Piedmont leaderboards and all that good stuff. Um, or if your sponsor insists on um, cutting a check, then you'll want to follow the 
um, Northern Piedmont Community Foundation offline donation policy, um, which I'll get into specifically in um, a couple of slides. So the next item on the dashboard, um, the next section um, under the fundraising section is the reports section. Um, you can access um, a bunch of different types of reports through this report section of your account. Um, clicking on the reports will give you that submenu that you see here um, where you can choose from your all donations report. Um, you have there's a recurring donations report, there's a retention report, um, lots and lots of reports for you to review. Um, and uh, the disbursements report is there as well. So your donation report is going to be available to you in real time. And it's going to include information like uh, donor name, email, um, any designations or dedication options that you've set up through that checkout flow um, that you customized. It'll include the gross and net amount of their donations, as well as fees associated. Um, and then it'll also tell you what page they donated to, as well as lots of other information. Um, basically, the information that you set up to collect during the checkout flow will also show in your donation report. So whatever information you need that will help you do a better job, um, make sure that you customize your checkout flow um, so that that information gets collected in that donation report for you. Um, so one quick example, if you, if you did turn on the option to collect phone numbers um, from donors during that checkout flow customization, then their phone numbers will also show up in your donation report. Um, the disbursement section of your report center um, allows you to see your batch disbursement history. Um, you can click on that disbursement listing to open up more information about that specific disbursement, like um, which donations were included in that report, um, in that disbursement, as well as a summary of the total amount, total associated fees, net amount. Um, we're super big into transparency on Mighty Cause, so um, you know finance teams will will be so happy when they see these disbursements reports because they are just super full of information. Anything a finance team could possibly want, that information is there. Um, so definitely check that out, um, especially you know once you start um, getting disbursements from us, uh, that way you can see what information is included and let us know if you have any questions. Um, so just FYI, all donations on the site um, are processed by the Mighty Cause Foundation, which is a donor advised fund. Um, and your organization can set up uh, electric, um, electric, electronic fund transfer, um, which is the recommended method since it allows fund disbursements twice monthly. Um, we can also send disbursements via check uh, if you don't want to put in your banking information, totally fine. Um, checks get sent out once a month. Um, and there's a five dollar administrative administrative fee associated with check disbursements. So it is recommended that you sign up for EFT since it's free um, and you get your money faster. Um, and I know last year we were able to get everyone's Give Local Piedmont um, funds plus prize money um, way faster than what has been done in the past. So um, that's our plan again this year. Uh, which obviously the faster you can get your money, the faster you can do good in your community, which is our goal as well. So. Um, any questions on the disbursement report or anything like that, um, if you have a question now, obviously type it into the um, questions module, but as you're looking at your report, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our support team. Let me um, just add that probably for most of our Give Local Piedmont participants, disbursement really means the one check coming from or the one electronic funds transfer coming from give local Piedmont funds raised. Some of our participants use Mighty Cause the entire year for fundraising and disbursements beyond the one give local check disbursement for, uh, is that that's relevant. Um, but otherwise, for the majority of our users, it's it's one disbursement um, and it'll be the entire Give Local Piedmont donation uh, net for your organization. Okay. And, you know, your disbursement history from last year will still be in your account. So you can always um, review what was sent to you last year, all the information included, and then um, you can expect the same for this year as well. Um, the other report I wanted to specifically call out is the donor retention report. 
Um, this report is going to be very helpful for those organizations that participated in Give Local Piedmont last year. Um, you can find that donor retention report under the report section of your dashboard. Um, the retention report allows you to see at a glance which donors um, have been retained and have not been retained from certain time periods. Um, so what I recommend with this is basically once early giving starts um, or before um, uh, it starts on April 20th, you can visit this section of your account. You can update the time period to show last year's um, early giving period through Give Local Piedmont 2020, and you can download the report that comes up. Um, that's going to give you all the information about who donated to your campaign uh, last year, as well as tell you right away if they've donated again this year. It's really helpful if you create kind of a strategy around this and download that report, um, you know, a little bit after early giving starts, maybe halfway through early giving and then right before the giving day. So you can see right away who's given, who hasn't, um, and then uh, kind of target your messaging around that. Um, it's, you know, it's really great to help you build that email marketing strategy so you're hitting the right donors with the most timely and targeted message that you can. Um, so I, I recommend checking this out. Um, you know, you can, you can look at it now uh, if you want in your account. Um, you can update the time period to reflect last year's Give Local Piedmont period so you can see everyone that donated. Um, the little red, you see the little red dots. Um, uh, next to the donor name. If it's red, it means they haven't been retained. If it's green, it means they have. Um, and then it uh, gives you their email address um, and the source. Basically, you can download it and it'll give you all that information so you can decide how to use that information best um, for, for your nonprofit. Uh, and then the last section on your dashboard is the settings. Um, so if you click settings, it opens a sub menu where you can update your organization settings, like customizing your URL, managing your EFT, um, to you know, um, updating your legal information, um, all that good stuff. Um, the settings section is also where you can add or remove admins from your account. Um, so moving on from the dashboard, um, I have just a couple more slides. Um, really like to to get through and then we'll get to the questions. Um, but I want to make sure I mention the really great tools that you can use as you get ready for Give Local Piedmont. Um, and that is going to be in the nonprofit toolkit. Uh, the toolkit is located on the homepage for GiveLocalPiedmont.org. Uh, it has tips and tricks. It's There's an FAQ there. It's got walkthroughs. Um, it's got templates that you can use for email and social media. Um, this is also where you'll be able to find today's training recording, as well as logos and graphics that you can download um, to start, uh, you know, building your email campaign for Give Local Piedmont this year. So definitely check out the toolkit if you haven't already. Um, refer back to it as you're um, planning your campaign. Uh, it's got lots of stuff there for you. So um, yeah, and if there's anything that you know you would love to see in the future or have questions on, then just let us know. Um, we can always add to this resource. It's it's there for you. Um, it's there to help you. So, um, you know, let us know if, if the resources there are helping you. And um, we we have lots more at our disposal if you're looking for something specific that you um, could utilize. Okay, so lastly, I just want to go over really quickly um, the check slash offline donation policy for this year. Um, so offline donations, just so everyone knows, are check donations that your organization receives for Give Local Piedmont. Um, Northern Piedmont Community Foundation is not able to accept cash. Uh, as I'm sure you all know, you know, the purpose of the online giving day is to encourage the use of secure and easy online philanthropy. Um, however, we totally get that some donors are going to prefer to donate through check. Um, checks will be counted towards your final donation total. Um, however, only online donations are going to be eligible to compete for prizes. So a very important note um, for everyone to know and probably, you know, write down somewhere, no organization is to record or deposit any check that's designed for um, or that's designated for Give Local Piedmont. Um, all the checks must be delivered and in the hands of Northern Piedmont Community Foundation staff by 5 p.m. on Monday, May 3rd this year. Um, so write that date down. It's important to remember if you have any checks, they have to be in 
um, NPCF hands by 5 p.m. on that Monday. Um, all checks received uh, must be delivered uh, to the Community Foundation by mail, um, preferably or in person. Um, checks have to be made out to Northern Piedmont Community Foundation with the designated charity written in the memo line. Um, again, the deadline for actual checks in hand is Monday, May 3rd at 5. Um, all the checks received are to be recorded and deposited by um, Northern Piedmont Community Foundation staff members only. Um, any check that's recorded or deposited into any other bank account except for Northern Piedmont Community Foundation is going to be considered a traditional donation to your organization and not part of the Give Local Piedmont tally. Um, if a donor is contributing more than one um, to more than one organization, um, please ask them to write one check per organization. Um, if you are able to include an email address with the checks, that would be really awesome. Um, so that Northern Piedmont Community Foundation can confirm the donation with the donor and the nonprofit. Um, this is a lot of text on the slide, but if you, you know, if you have any questions, you can visit. Uh, we do have a specific offline donation policy on the site that you can read through um, at your leisure. Um, it's under the resources tab. Um, this is also where you'll be able to find um, the NPCF mailing address if you have any checks. Um, and it includes the full offline donation policy. This is basically the gist of it, but to re review the full policy, go to givelocalpiedmont.org, click resources, and then there's that, um, the uh, sub tab for the offline donation policy. Um, of course, any questions about offline donations, just let DD know. Um, and then lastly, this is the um, support slide I talked about at the beginning. Um, Basically, you know, I want to make sure you have our support team's contact information um, for you to reference. Um, our support team is a really great resource before and um, during the uh, Give Local Piedmont Giving Day for really anything campaign related. Um, you know, if you need help, like setting up your site, if you need help um, around figuring out how to strategize, if your donor needs a receipt reset, um, you can reach out to them at any time. Um, so. Again, the email support at mightycause.com. Um, they're available Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. We will have um, live chat available on the day of, um, so May 4th. Um, live chat will be available. So if there's anything like a fire that comes up that day, um, you know, you somehow your logo got messed up, um, live chat us. We can help you. Um, so that will specifically be available on Give Local Piedmont Day on May 4th. Um, up until then, you can reach us by email or phone um, Monday through Friday. Um, and then lastly, I want to plug the second webinar, All About Strategy. It's on March 17th at 2. Um, and the registration link is live in the toolkit right now. So I highly recommend just going over there right after this webinar, signing up um, so that you get all the information um, handy. Uh, so that is it on my end. Um, let me see if there's any questions for a few. Okay, so first question, um, if we registered last year, will anything on the form be pre-filled? Um, that's a great question, but no, it will not be pre-filled. Um, I do like that idea though, so I will, write it down for our development team, because um, that would be very convenient. But for this year, no, um, you'll need to fill out the registration form in full um, for this year, even if you participated last year. Let's see, um, can I change our background and logo on the profile from what we used last year? Um, yes, so you can update your profiles, um, information, graphics, whatever you want at any time. Um, if you wanted to do it in the middle of the day on Give Local Piedmont, you can do it. So it's that those editing tools are available to you at any time. Um, and then the edit function is just that pencil on your profile. Um, so if you um, go to your organization's um, profile page you and open it up for editing, there's a little toggle that says edit. 
those pencils will appear and um, you'll just click on them to be able to open up that section for editing. Um, let's see, where is the site where we log in? So um, givelocalpiedmont.org is where you'll wanna go. Um, there's a little login icon in the upper um, right. Uh, it's a little like, click on that and that's where you'll be able to log in. Um, so the next question is where slash how do you enter offline donations? Um, do not enter offline donations. So any check donations that you receive for Give Local Piedmont um, need to be funneled through Northern Piedmont Community Foundation. Um, so you can see the, the full check policy um, on givelocalpiedmont.org under the resources tab. But if you do receive check donations, which we anticipate there being check donations, um, please have your donors make the check out to Northern Piedmont Community Foundation and write your nonprofit in the memo line. And then make sure that Northern Piedmont Community Foundation has those checks in hand um, by May 3rd at five. Let's see. So, um, on your so the next question is about character limitations um, on the profile or you know recommended length. Um, so um, there's no real like the character limitation on the profile is like like very long. Um, so you're probably not going to have a problem with that. Um, but the recommended length, you know, I I wouldn't necessarily make it like super long and try to include you know um, breaks in there because really. Um, you know, your donors are going to come to the site and uh, if, it, if it's a huge block of text, then they're not, they're not likely to read the whole thing. Um, you'll want to make it like visually interesting to them, um, include a couple pictures of your um, organization and what you're doing. Um, and just, you know, uh, just make it really compelling to them. I mean, what, think about like what you would like to see, what kind of, um, you know, if you're writing an email, what kind of emails are you more likely to read? Are they visually interesting emails or are they like block of text emails? Probably visually interesting. Um, so just as you're thinking about what you want to put in that story section or the about section, um, just think about what you would be interested in seeing. And, um, you know, that's probably what your donors will be interested in seeing as well. Let's see. Um, does the checkout um, thank you also function as a tax receipt? So yes. So the site will automatically send your donors a tax deductible receipt. Um, and then you as the nonprofit have the ability to customize the top part of that um, tax deductible receipt. Um, whether or not you customize that part, the site will still automatically send it out. It's just obviously nicer if you know you're you're able to customize it and your donors see that. But, you know, if you're a small organization, you don't have a lot of bandwidth, like that email will still get sent out. So um, you don't have to send your donors tax, tax deductible receipts, but, um, you know, you're, you're welcome to do so if that's your normal process, um, but they will get those tax deductible receipts automatically after their donation is completed. Um, Let's see, I might not get to all the questions. So if I don't get to your question um, before we run out of time, then I will um, definitely follow up with you after um, the webinar's over, just FYI. Um, next question is, um, how does uh, retention work um, against last year's Give Local Piedmont donors? So um, the retention report basically just gives you a quick snapshot of, you know, who donated last year to your campaign and who hasn't donated yet this year. So um, when you go into your account, you'll be able to see all the donors that donated last year to your Give Local Piedmont campaign. And then you can go to that retention report. Um, it would probably make more sense to do it after early giving has already started. So you can, um, you know, see who's donated. Um, during that time period and who hasn't. Um, but that's the gist of it. Um, it. It basically just gives you a quick snapshot of who you've retained from last year so that you can easily contact them and let them know, hey, you donated last year. It looks like you donated $25. Um, give Local Piedmont Early Giving is open. Please consider giving again. 
um, maybe $30 this year. Uh, so it kind of empowers you to be able to see right at a glance um, who those donors are. Um, since, you know, they're, they're warm donors, they're not, you know, new people that you're reaching out to, they, they're already connected to your nonprofit. Um, so the next question is about um, electronic fund transfer. If you happen to have set that up last year, there's if your bank account's still the same, there's no reason that you do not need to reset it up again this year. Everything is all still the same. Um, and then of course, if you uh, get your funds by check, um, you're welcome to just double check to make sure your legal address is um, correct. But again, if it hasn't changed from last year, then it'll still be the same on the site. Um, but it's always a good idea to just go in there again, double check everything, make sure that it's all correct. And then it, and if anything does need to be updated, we still have plenty of time before Give Local Piedmont for you to be able to do that. Um, next question, can you contact previous donors before early giving to remind them to give again? Definitely. If you want to reach out to them um, to remind them that Give Local Piedmont's coming up, um, you're you're welcome to do that. Um, my recommendation is to to start doing that after early giving has opened on April 20th, just because if you reach out to them now, they might be like, "Oh, I'd love to donate," and then there's there's you know they might donate, but then it's not going to count towards Give Local Piedmont because early giving's not open. So um, I would. I would, you know, if you want to do that, that's great. There's nothing stopping you. But um, strategic wise, I would probably wait until after early giving opens. That way, donors have an actual action to take once they get that note, like note from you about um, Give Local Piedmont coming up. Um, let's see. What is the percent of each donation retained by Mighty Cause for this service? Um, so great question. Um, can't remember the fees for this campaign off the top of my head. Um, that information is in the FAQ um, on givelocalpiedmont.org. Um, so it gives you a complete breakdown of all the fees within that FAQ um, uh, on the site. So um, that way, and that way you can see it there. And then donors do have the option of covering those fees for you. Um, so if, you know, if your donor does cover the fee, then, um, you know, obviously you get 100% of, of their donation. Um, and then, of course, all that information is reflected in your um, uh, donation reports and your disbursement report. Um, let's see. So um, it looks like we're out of time. Um, there are a couple um questions that I didn't get to. If I did not get to your question, then I will email you um, directly um, about the question. Um, Dee Dee, do you have any like last minute stuff that you want to say before we let everyone go? No, not necessarily. I just want to make sure that the uh, folks are clear about, um, oh, about retention, um, using the retention, using uh, the concept of uh, the donors that gave last year and in the hopes that they'll give again this year. You know, you can start marketing Give Local Piedmont now, and you should definitely use the reports that you have from last year to help you do that. Um, uh, I think what uh, we're talking about in terms of um, retention and waiting until the event itself have to do more with momentum and uh, the recognition that during once online donating starts on April 20th with early giving, and then on the day of, you literally will have the ability to see who gave um, last year that has not given this year yet. And then you have a different kind of a way to approach them or reach them. Um, but you always can take the report of your prior year's donors and market to them for the event it's for the event starting anytime. And and we'll talk a lot about that going forward. But that's it. And Donna, as always, I appreciate it. And a reminder that this will be on the Give Local Piedmont website in the resource toolkit of, um, area for you to view again if you want to take your time and work through it slowly. Yep, yep. 
Um, thank you, Dee Dee. Thank you, everyone uh, who came and um, you know asked questions. I always love the questions. Um, if I did not get to your questions, I will email you um, after um, so that you have the information. Um, there is an FAQ on givelocalpiedmont.org. Um, so if you have any questions you think of later, feel free to email our support team, support at mightycause.com. Um, or visit those FAQs and um, um, yeah. So any questions, let us know. Thanks again for coming and participating. And um, we're super excited about Give Local Piedmont again this year. Um, and just thank you all so much for your time. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your week. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm.